Okay, so uh, here is um, approximate plan for our uh, coming three lectures, and then uh, later your presentations uh, will complement this uh, materials. So um, <clears throat> the goal, the plan uh, is is as follows: when we started uh, the class, we set up uh, from going from Kermitonian. Uh, then the perturbation theory, then um, practicing average over ensemble, um, using density metrics and rotating frame. and arriving to dissipative dynamics. So uh, by bringing all these cornerstones, we, we should uh, arrive to, to this goal. Um, the chapter that we are practicing right now is um, not yet there. So we already have Hamiltonian, we already have perturbation theory, we will revisit rotation frame, and we will introduce and discuss properties of density metrics in this uh, chapter. The only thing that uh, will be not fully covered, uh, we, will, we, will do not, we will not do the uh, thermal average over ensemble. We will uh, have the simplified form of the ensemble that will give only part of the uh, dynamics that is not fully dissipated, but has some properties. So uh, just as a little announcement is instead of surrounding, instead of substrate, solvent, uh, photon modes in the thermal state, we will have the so-called inhomogeneous broadening where the primary system electronic uh, levels are representing many copies of the uh, similar system, which slight difference in their energies, uh, transition energies, oscillator strengths, initial phase, and we will add together to see the effects that uh, so-called effect of free induction decay, that is a key factor for um, uh, spin and photon echo in the uh, NMR uh, spectroscopy. So we will be incomplete in this, in the aspect of thermal ensemble. In other aspects, we will approach uh, our goal. Uh, this is a plan, this uh, subjects are planned for uh, about three lectures. So we will revisit the rotating frame uh, that was covered, partially covered in the last lab and fully covered by Adam uh, on last Thursday. Um, then we will look for two electronic levels representing, let's say, home and room of a molecule and uh, solve differential equations uh, related to the um, excitation. And I believe during today, we will explore this solution in the limit uh, when the electromagnetic radiation is not infinite, but uh, acts only on the limited duration. And this will lead to so-called pulse area theorem that is uh, uh, very useful. Uh, it's not useful. It is a critical, critically important component uh, for uh, spin and photon echo. And then um, I believe uh, this will be lecture five, this will be lecture six, and this will be lecture seven. Here is the uh, original setup. So uh, we are starting with uh, interaction picture. Um, 
or it is safer to call it a rotating frame. So the all activities in the uh, third chapter, if you count overall course of first chapter of, of part one was about perturbation theory. So what happens to, uh, to, to a quantum system if Hamiltonian is not time independent, but if, if it does have time dependent uh, part. Uh, most typically, this consideration is applied to light to matter interaction, uh, which in uh, most advanced way is expressed in terms of factor potential, but in a simplified way, it is uh, uh, transition dipole operator times electric field, which oscillates uh, harmonically with uh, certain frequency. And there is a range of approximations such as uh, um, large wavelengths, that means uh, that uh, the strength of uh, electric field is not changed for the whole length of the of the molecule. So the time dependence of the Hamiltonian or the perturbative part of Hamiltonian is a mathematical discomfort. Therefore, uh, one does want to make a trick to find such system of coordinates not in Cartesian sense, but in sense of uh, making a uh, system of coordinates rotating in the, in the complex plane, uh, so that the Schrodinger equation for perturbed Hamiltonian will be time independent or all, all, almost time independent. And uh, in this trick, one is including the um, anything related to dynamics associated um, with zeros order Hamiltonian into wave function itself. So the only influence of the external perturbation uh, is included, uh, is included um, into this Schrodinger equation. And know that in rotating frame, uh, so here we have Schrodinger, frame interaction Hamiltonian, and it is explicitly time dependent. In the rotating frame, it is time independent. Uh, I'm not telling anything new. It is uh, just a recital what Adam taught us uh, five days ago and what uh, was briefly uh, discussed at the end of lab number two. So um, main, avenue of connecting quantum calculations with experiment is to compose observables, expectation values. And in Schrodinger's Schrodinger picture, one uh, sandwiches Brian Cat uh, operator in Schrodinger's picture and gets expectation value as function of time. There is um, Heisenberg picture and interaction picture where one is uh, expressing this sandwich in slightly reorganized way. So the ev time evolution is translated from wave function onto, onto the uh, operator. So originally time evolution did belong to uh, wave function and now time evolution is saved into, into the operator. Uh, an important difference between Heisenberg picture and uh, interaction picture is that in Heisenberg, in Heisenberg picture, the time evolution is dependent on the full Hamiltonian. And here we have uh, evolution operator depending on only unperturbed Hamiltonian. Unperturbed. So um, if one really wants to be um, careful and rigorous, one, one can always put time ordering as London taught us uh, five days ago. But uh, if we put unperturbed Hamiltonian here, and uh, if uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian is time independent, it can be approximated just as uh, exponential that uh, 
evolves with constant phase for, for each eigenstate. And this Hamiltonian here in U sub zero evolution operator does not include uh, external perturbation. So under this definition, one can perform transitions between uh, uh, wave function in rotation, rotating and Schrodinger uh, pictures. One can trans uh, go from rotating to Schrodinger and back from Schrodinger to rotated by just practicing this uh, operator in the uh, like inverse operator with u minus one, u uh, is identity operator. And uh, the Hermitian means that uh, u minus one is equivalent to um, Hermitian conjugate. Okay, so here is regular uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation. And uh, in Sch uh, Sch uh, Schrodinger equation in Schrodinger picture is uh, includes this wave function and Hamiltonian, which includes both uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian in Schrodinger picture and interaction. Hamiltonian V in Schrodinger picture. So nothing new at this point. Now we borrow transition, uh, transformation from, from Schrodinger picture to uh, rotating frame by uh, plugging the evolution operator in front of the, of the uh, rotating uh, wave function. So here and there, and except this change, everything is the same. Uh, time derivative is the same, constants are the same, and uh, Hamiltonian in Schrodinger picture is the same. Now, uh, one does apply time derivative to a product of the evolution operator and wave function in the rotating frame. So it is. Uh, derivative of, uh, of a product. So when applies uh, subsequently to first and second function. So derivative of evolution operator times wave function in the rotating frame unchanged, uh, evolution operator and derivative of the wave function in the rotated frame over time. And the right part uh, stays unchanged. So um, the explicit form of the evolution operator brings us that uh, time derivative simply uh, develops a factor of Hamiltonian, unperturbed Hamiltonian operator in uh, Schrodinger uh, picture in front of the evolution operator times uh, uh, wave function rotated frame. So time derivative has been converted into this uh, term. So due to this practice of derivative of evolution operator, one can identify similar terms. So uh, Schrodinger unperturbed uh, evolution, this times this and in this term. So they can be canceled. Upon this cancellation, uh, one is uh, living with two terms. The evolution operator applied to time derivative uh, of the wave function rotating frame and the perturbation Hamiltonian in Schrodinger picture applied to evolution operator applied to rotating frame. So to practice, to arrive to a regular uh, form of time dependent Schrodinger equation, one may want to remove this uh, evolution operator. And typically one can re remove a matrix and operator by applying the inverse matrix that gives uh, identity operator. And to be mathematically correct, one needs to apply this inverse operator uh, from to both left and right sides of the equation. 
and in the right side of the equation, we are getting a construction of uh, inverse operator, uh, perturbation Hamiltonian in Schrodinger picture, and then um, evolution operator going forward. So by rules of linear algebra, if vector is converted by uh, matrix of unit transformation, then uh, double unit transformation from left and right would convert a matrix, an operator, to the same system of coordinates um, where, we, where we transform by this operator. So this is a definition of the operator in the rotating frame. And if you accept this definition, then uh, time-dependent showing the equation in the rotating dependent showing the equation uh, in the rotating frame does work uh, in a very simple way. Um, I believe London also used uh, this uh, interaction picture rotating frame in developing in, in infinite order of time dependent perturbation theory. So um, if we want to be a little bit more practical and uh, apply this rule, this transformation to uh, an applied example, then we can consider two-level system, uh, which is an example of let's say hydrogen atom or a molecule where we have uh, um, like multiple levels and due to splittings, we can select just a pair of levels that are in resonance in a certain uh, frequency of, of electromagnetic radiation. So um, there is an idea that due to resonance, we have a selectivity of transitions, and one always can identify active pair of levels, let's say occupied and unoccupied, which will be affected by optical radiation. Uh, most health, healthy way to think about it is that it is a Homo and Lumo uh, orbitals or um, um, of, of a molecule or in the uh, frame of bound excited state, it is ground and first excited state of a molecule. So in Schrodinger picture, the uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian includes energies of, uh, of the states and interaction Hamiltonian will include the uh, um, transition dipole operator times electric field. Um, this notation already uh, uses uh, a trick assuming that uh, transition dipole operator is having shape of uh, matrix identical, similar to SX uh, operator times value, uh, value of the mu between excited ground and excited, and then, then electric field. So we already express it in uh, matrix form. Uh, if one wants to be universal, one may describe the selectivity, uh, frequency selectivity in terms of detuning, how far the excitation energy transition between ground and excited is uh, situated from frequency of the incident light. And most simple and natural and quick derivations happen when they are in the exact resonance. So the transition to rotating frame leads to removal of the uh, oscillations in the, in the interaction Hamiltonian. So due to transition into rotating frame, we do not have uh, oscillating cosine in here, and we do not have energies on the main diagonal. So uh, this 
time dependent Schrodinger equation can be processed further in terms of uh, as a differential equation for expansion coefficients. So if one just uh, opens uh, this matrix equation via row by column, one would get two um, equations, one for expansion coefficient C1, another for expansion coefficient of C2. But uh, we do see, once again, if you do row by column, that they are uh, cross-coupled. So multiplying this uh, zero times matrix element, you pick up the uh, uh, expansion coefficient for, this, for the second state. And time dependence of the second state depends on the uh, expansion coefficient of the first state. Uh, which is fine, it is, uh, it is a linear equation that we can solve. Another um, specification. The matrix element of transition dipole, in case we are considering a couple of electronic levels uh, by their appropriate orbitals, can be expressed as a matrix element of the uh, of position times charge. So uh, dipole is distance uh, charge times distance. And uh, by admitting these notations, one can also um, combine it with electric field in, with a scalar product. And then one would arrive uh, to the scalar value, uh, absolute, um, the amplitude of electric field oscillations. In, uh, times transition dipole divided by a uh, Planck constant. So it, it has a uh, dimension um, transition dipole times energy, uh, time, uh, sorry, times electric field has uh, units of, of energy and energy divided by Planck constant has units of, of frequency. So this combination uh, has units of uh, frequency. It is this frequency is responsible for transitions from uh, state two to state one and from state uh, one to state two. And uh, it is referred to in the literature after the name of uh, Isaac Rabi, and it is called Rabi frequency. So if one admits this uh, notation of, uh, of Rabi frequency, then uh, we do have system of uh, linear differential equations of the of, of, of the first order that one may want to um, solve for certain initial conditions. Um, reasonable initial conditions is to assume that before system was irradiated by uh, um, external electromagnetic. Uh, Field, the state number one, which you can assume as uh, Homo, was occupied, and state number two, which can correspond to Homo, was empty. So we set, a, set it up as an initial condition. So C1 at time equals zero is one, C2 at time equals zero equals two. And then uh, we just want to um, solve and analyze this system of differential equations. So um, one can apply second, one more derivative to the uh, first equation. So one, one gets second derivative of, of the expansion coefficient of first state, first derivative of second, and then plug in the second equation. And by doing this trick, one, Obtaining a transition from two um, from two um, oh I see I see the question question from from uh, Patricia um,
I am not sure at this point. Maybe it comes uh, from um, setting the transition table more similar to uh, SX operator, which uh, has uh, one half here and there. Uh, maybe it is just a, a definition, but uh, I remember from uh, skipping this divide by two, the results look uh, uglier, but I'll take it as a homework to uh, answer the question of Patricia to, to discuss uh, uh, where the factor one half comes from. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. And uh, please uh, um, speak up if something is needed because I'm not always monitoring the, the chat line. Okay, so we are getting the second order equation for coefficient C1. So it's, uh, uh, it, it is connected to, to itself and, and can be solved. The standard way to solve uh, uh, differential equations is to assume that solution has an exponential form, and one can plug in this um, general form of solution um, into the equation. And then practice the uh, derivative and get a characteristic equation. So if one practice derivative, the power of the exponential, since it is a second derivative power of exponential in power two uh, appears in front of our trial function. And then we do have a characteristic equation of uh, um, lambda squared is um, equals minus uh, square root of radio frequency. If one solves it, one, one gets that the lambda should be imaginary plus minus uh, uh, radio frequency over, uh, over two. So if one admits that the there are two independent solutions, general solution must be a summation of uh, the one with uh, positive imaginary unit and negative imaginary unit. And to match initial conditions, we should admit that uh, there are two coefficients, a known coefficient that we uh, must match to the initial conditions. So by matching this, uh, to match the initial conditions, to, uh, to match the unknown coefficients to the initial conditions, we set up time equals zero. then each exponential becomes one and we get a uh, equation that summation of two uh, three, two coefficients in front of um, general solutions must be equal one. But this is, so it corresponds to the ground state is occupied at initial state, but this is not, is not sufficient to uh, find both C1 and C2. We have uh, C plus and C minus. We have um, two unknown coefficients and one equation. So we need one more equation derived from initial conditions to get certainty, to, to solve this initial uh, condition problem. So if we take connection, so it is a second equation in our set of linear equations, connection between uh, expansion coefficients of first and second uh, expansion coefficients, then do, uh, the second, uh, the amplitude probability of the excited state can be expressed as a derivative of uh, time derivative of the uh, amplitude probability of the ground state. And if we practice this derivative, then um, um, one is getting minus uh, factor in front of 
the exponential oscillating in the in the opposite direction. So by observing this um, equation in a limit time equals zero <clears throat> and canceling the radio frequency, one is arriving to additional equation that subtraction of this plus and minus coefficients must be zero. And now we arrive to linear algebraic uh, set of equations um, that uh, would allow us to solve for uh, plus and minus coefficients. Um, I apologize for going over the simple things uh, with such details, but it shows an image of what's going on if one uh, um, does computational solution for system with much larger amount of uh, levels if one wants to to practice it for larger systems so the, the way to um, find solution still in a numerical way will go through finding the um, expansion coefficients so uh, by adding together these two equations one would get that uh, c plus is one half and uh, by uh, plugging it one, one would get that uh, C minus uh, is, is equal to it, is, is also on half. And by plugging these coefficients into solution for um, expansion coefficient of, of, the, of the ground state, one is getting that there is a summation of two exponentials evolving, complex exponentials evolving in the opposite direction, which gives us cosine, Right by Euler equation, and uh, by practicing connection between expansion coefficient equation of motion for ex, uh, expansion coefficients, one can get the uh, solution for for the uh, expansion coefficient of the excited state. So. If one takes absolute value squared of the um, expansion coefficient of the ground state, one would get it as a, a sine squared. So at time zero, it will be equal one. I guess I have a question. Please. I, I'm still not totally clear on how we know that the, uh, that like the, perturbing Hamiltonian in the rotating frame is the, it, you know, it's just V sandwiched in between the evolution operator and its inverse. Like, is that just something that we kind of assume and that's how we like get to the rotating frame and it just kind of works out mathematically or? So, um, you, uh, London, you, you want to um, doubt and object this uh, definition. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, I just don't know. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, how do we know that that actually lines up with like what we want? Or is the assumption that that is our Hamiltonian in the rotating frame? And that's like what defines our rotating frame? It, it defines our, our rotating frame. And uh, uh, on today's meeting, I skipped uh, um, literal practicing of all this uh, part, but I believe we did it in uh, in the lab. So explicitly doing this that uh, would remove any oscillations uh, if if we add rotating wave approximation. If we drop cal uh, counter terms, then it becomes uh, time independent. So the okay. main, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I suppose, yeah. The main, the main uh, thing I was worrying about that uh, to to cancel the H naught here, so that uh, to have nothing on the on the main diagonal. Right. And after uh, this transformation gives uh, removes time dependence. Because I like in a general case, you know what I mean. I just don't know that we can be sure of that. 
Well, uh, in general case, we cannot be sure of anything. Uh, here, it works perfectly for resonance. So when the yeah. light in, is in the absolute resonance with the transition energy between two states. As, as soon as we deviate from this resonance, there will be more and more time dependence in this uh, perturbation Hamiltonian. And it will be less and less suited for theoretical consideration and, and would need numerical treatment. Okay. So if we do consider the electric field as, as function of time, um, it oscillates with very high frequency that uh, we are not going to monitor. It. Our, our main goal was to um, get rid of it. And the main uh, aspect of uh, little drawings that I'm, I'm going to show right now uh, is to bring our numerical solution, or not numerical, analytical solution, to the specific area of time domain. Um, as of now, we were considering that uh, the Hamiltonian in the rotating frame is constant, which is uh, good mathematically, but from practical point of view, um, we do not do our experiments continuously. There is a, even if it is daylight, it, it, it's limited by the time of, of, of daylight. And uh, if it is in the lab, there is a duration of irradiation. And um, Sometimes there are ways to switch light irradiation on and off, either by just uh, starting and finishing an experiment and in more advanced way by controlling the duration of uh, light source in, uh, in additional ways. I'm, I'm uh, going to discuss pulses when the irradiation is not continuous but pulsed. And uh, in this situation, the The electric field is an envelope function so that we can uh, consider that uh, in rotating frame, interaction Hamiltonian uh, is uh, something that we already agreed for time uh, bigger than zero and smaller than uh, you know, T prime. And it is zero if time is. Smaller than zero, and the zero if time is bigger than T prime. So the question is um, how much good or bad things uh, the electromagnetic radiation can offer to electronic system if it is um, active for a limited duration of time. So if we look at the T1 as function of time absolute value uh, squared or uh, at, the, at uh, the same time range, we have obtained that it should be a sine squared of uh, radio frequency Times, times time. From this point of view, um, one may measure time in units of uh, time times two pi divided by omega radian. 
and then uh, in this situation, the time will be unitless. So the population of the brown state starts with one, assign for uh, time equals zero, and then So, uh, assign does full oscillation and assign square uh, does uh, positive transitions uh, between, between one and zero. And uh, during um, so it's it's uh, label label access. So here we have time equals the population of the first of the ground state. Deforms uh, oscillations between uh, fully occupied to zero and then back to uh, unoccupied. If we would uh, do the visualization for C2 squared, if you perform the dynamics in the In the opposite phase, so they they both uh, will be always positive, but by the uh, main trigonometric uh, identity, a sense square, a sense square equals one. The summation of population for the uh, ground and excited state will be always one. So the uh, population, the density will never disappear. It, it will be always, always there. So here let's discuss what would happen if we go forward in time for longer, if it is active uh, for a longer period of time or shorter period of time. So what would happen uh, if we drop the if you drop the irradiation at certain um, At certain stage. So um, there is an interesting ob observation that the oscillations of the population happen in a regular way, and if one would stop irradiation at a certain instant of time, then one can arrive at any distribution, any proportion between occupation of the ground and excited state. So by finishing uh, irradiation, if one starts at zero and then one finishes at certain duration, one can arrive to any desired Distribution of population between ground and excited. Right now, in, in this setup, we did admitted 
that the envelope function of, uh, of the uh, electric field is rectangular. And from this uh, point of view, the phase, uh, the proportion between ground and excited state is uh, equal to um, ready frequency, which is electric field uh, times uh, dipole times time. In a general way, in a general consideration, if the uh, envelope is not rectangular, the argument of this uh, x axis, which one can call uh, by angle te theta, can be expressed in uh, more general way. So it can be expressed as integral from initial to final time of radiation or, or uh, uh, electric field times dipole dt. And more general, one can express it as uh, from integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, U of T times new DT. So uh, the dipole is not changing over time. It is only the electric field that does change. And we are arriving to an important consideration that uh, in case the electric field is getting not only uh, chopped to start at a certain time and end at a certain time. If we have a variation of the envelope function, if it goes, uh, it becomes more intense and less intense, the qualitative influence of electric field onto the occupations of ground and excited state will have the same qualitative uh, features. So let me do uh, this image uh, once again and just artistically, not very artistically, draw uh, what would it mean. So in case we would have the electric field having the envelope of something very non-rectangular. No electric field, then it uh, it oscillates with bigger amplitude and smaller amplitude. So the influence, you can use X as a T or uh, T pi over one of the value times T. So the influence of uh, the electric field oscillating electric field, perturbing electric field onto the oscillations of uh, population so P1 if you if you be uh, ground state if you stay uh, unchanged original and as time as uh, intensity of electric field increases, as radio frequency is increasing, uh, the oscillations will become more frequent, and as intensity decreases, they become they will become slower, and then it will stop at a certain level, and uh, the oscillation of the uh, excited state we work in the counter phase sorry I need to uh, it, 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 it oscillates between zero and 
zero and one. You can fix it. And the oscillation of the, the, the population of the excited state will act in the counter phase. So, um, the Ready free instantaneous ready frequency may change over time. But populations uh, of uh, of the grounded excited state and generally quantum state of of this uh, electronic system after uh, the end of the pulse. Depends only on integral of the uh, intensity of electric field uh, over time. So instead of expressing population as function of time, one can express uh, population as function of theta. Which is argument of time. And uh, theta is defined by integral of the area under the uh, envelope function for the uh, electric field uh, amplitude. So the quantum state, the expansion coefficients C1 and C2, and populations of uh, ground and excited state can be expressed as function of the uh, angle as a area under the under envelope of uh, pulse and this statement uh, which we can formulate in a different way is um, uh, Typically referred to as pulse area theorem. Pulse area theorem. Uh, one can make an attempt to prove it by going into infinite order of uh, perturbation theory. So if we admit the expression that uh, London generously introduced to all of us at the um, if one ap applies uh, uh, this time ordered infinite order perturbation theory uh, expansion for evolution of the two level system, then uh, one would get that. Uh, the transitions between uh, ground and uh, excited states can be expressed as a, a transition operator in the uh, power of exponential, and it will depend only on the area under the pulse. So um, these considerations are especially interested in uh, uh, two special cases. So when area under the um, pulse in these units is uh, equal to 2 pi, then uh, Equals, here. Yes. So if it is equals 2 pi, 
then uh, it means there will be a full uh, rotation. So it, it would change uh, from um, uh, ground back to ground from full 100% one, one oscillation to 100% occupation to 100% occupation. So it will be no change. For uh, area equals pi, it will correspond to the transition from 100% population uh, P1 uh, to zero occupation. And the occupation of uh, excited state will go to 100%. So in case the area under the pulse, uh, including transition back and, and uh, pump constant expressed as, a, as an angle uh, was equal to pi, then the um, tool system is experiencing inversion, uh, which means uh, the uh, population of ground state goes to zero, population of Excited goes to 100%. And uh, another important case uh, if the area under the pulse is uh, pi over 2, then the dynamics stops. In the middle. So uh, uh, both ground and, and uh, excited state stop at the 50% uh, of occupation. So uh, area under the pulse equals to, uh, pi over 2 um, gives the ground goes into 50% population and excited arrives to 50% uh, population as well. Um, when we were listening to presentation of um, Max last time, there were questions of, of Jabot about how to perform transition from quantum to statistical approaches. And uh, Max did pave a very healthy way to do it. There were just little technical details uh, that uh, uh, one could improve. So the general idea that if one wants to merge the quantum and statistical approach, it is not possible to do in a framework of wave function. Uh, just by uh, that uh, wave function um, is suited to describe only so-called pure states if one has uh, isolated systems. If one, um, the Boltzmann distribution, statistical averages, um, is not possible to do in the framework of uh, wave function. But if one plays the approach, the, the full quantum approach, but expresses a uh, state of a system not in terms of wave function, but in terms of so-called density matrix or density operator, then uh, it is a natural bridge uh, from single isolated system to healthy average over ensemble and a way to describe uh, interaction with uh, both and perform um, averages over ensemble. So uh, I'm going to start this transition uh, for maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, and then we will finish for today and continue, continue next time. So in case we do have a slight detuning, uh, if the 
tuning of the uh, exciting field frequency to transition of uh, between is not ideal if you do have slight detuning and we can call it delta. Then uh, the Hamiltonian uh, in the rotating frame, including unperturbed and uh, perturbed Hamiltonian uh, in matrix form will include uh, minus detuning over two plus detuning over two. Uh, and here the um, Rabi, Rabi frequency over two. Then the equation of motion for ground and excited states will read uh, appropriately uh, so uh, since we have a little minus here, it will convert into plus zero. Since here we have a healthy plus, it will be regular minus i over h bar as it should be in Schrodinger equation. So those two terms just accumulate delta. Delta over two, delta over two. So this is uh, a regular accumulation of phase that happens in uh, absence of the um, perturbation. If you do have a perturbation, there will be an additional term minus uh, over two, radio frequency C two minus A over two, radio frequency C two. So. Uh, in, in a very few moments, I'm going to introduce density metrics, and I'm, I know that you all are well versed in density metrics. You, so a lot of you are uh, independent or, or uh, collegiate researchers in, in this area. I'm just going to revisit it and reintroduce it. But before going to definition of density metrics, uh, I'm going to do one more additional step. So to redo this definition uh, of the equation of motion for expansion coefficients of the uh, populations of ground and excited state for the complex conjugates. Um, how do equation of motion Equations of motion for expansion coefficients of the complex conjugates should look like. What should I change in the original equation of motion? Max? Oh, point. Oh, oh. Uh, yes, Hadassah, please go ahead. I was going to say you'd make the imaginary terms. Or like negative, multiply them by negative one. Ex uh, excellent. Yes, uh, it's it's the only thing. Yeah. So I'm redoing everything in the absolutely the same fashion, but where was a plus? I put minus. Minus i h bar delta over two c one plus i over two uh, radio frequency c two plus my h bar delta over two c two plus my over two radio frequency c one should be here. So we agree on this. Perfect. Now um, let's define uh, density matrix. Is just a product of uh, expansion coefficient without conjugation and expansion coefficient with conjugation. So right now we do not do any um, chemical or physical consequences. We just define that for 
pure system, isolated chemical system, like my, uh, as an example, two level system, we just define such an object and we can uh, uh, apply it to a situation when uh, expansion coefficients are time dependent. Now, we need to set up a goal of defining equation of motion for density metrics. So if you do know how the uh, expansion coefficients, how the wave function evolves in time, what would be the consequences, what would be the time evolution for the density metrics? And now uh, I'm going to do it very slowly, very carefully, and very practically. So uh, no general ideas, only one with the uh, applied examples. So I would set up the C1, C1 star um, density matrix for four elements. Uh, so if uh, expansion coefficients, there are two expansion coefficients, possible products, we will have uh, total four elements, row one, one, row two, two, row one, two, row two, one. And they can be stored in a way for matrix. Okay. So uh, let's d, dt, row one. Uh, let's just do an experiment, d, dt, c1, c2, star. D, DT, C2, C1 star, D, DT, C2, C2 star. So, <coughs> what should I do here? Uh, since each of these expansion coefficients is a function of time, I do need to practice derivative of a product, right? So there will be a derivative of the first function times second function unchanged plus first function unchanged times derivative of the second function. So what I'm going to do is to use the equation of motion for both expansion coefficients in their Conjugates and plug in the values of derivatives. Um, I know that what I'm trying to do doesn't look very smart, but uh, by going through the simplest possible practical application, we will have, have immediate feeling of what it is, because general derivations uh, may potentially look uh, confusing and complicated, and if we just look on this practical example of uh, density metrics for uh, two levels, it will give a hopefully very clear picture. So, no, 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 no. And time zero. Now I do need uh, help uh, in prompting me what uh, what I should write in these little boxes. So, uh, what do we do for the derivative of the uh, um, first expansion coefficient of the ground state? Um, if there are volunteers, please dictate to me. If no, I will uh, try to write myself, and then uh, whoever finds errors uh, gets a credit. So, 
we used to have plus sign uh, and detuning over two for the revolution. And then minus I sign <coughs> ready frequency, and then uh, uh, the expansion coefficients for the excited state. So this part is phase accumulation, and this is uh, for transitions. Now, uh, in the second bracket, we are going to have the same thing, but with uh, inverted sign, as Hadassah has uh, suggested. So, minus I over 2, delta over 2, C1 star, right? Because now we hear everything with the, with the star, it's evolution of the uh, conjugated. And here we flip the sign. Plus I over two point of the ready C two star. So um there will be an exercise to to do the other things, uh, other uh, but let me open uh, brackets and see see what happens. So if we will open brackets there. We will have uh, four terms. One, two, three, four. So um, plus I over H bar delta over two C one C one star. Minus I the variety C2 C1 star minus I over 2 delta over 2 C1 C1 star plus I over 2 from the variety C1 C2 star. So um, what is interesting and important? We do have terms that we can cancel. And here we do have terms that um, we did define at Earlier, uh, at earlier stages. So this term will be rho two one. This term will be rho one two. So uh, we are getting the time evolution of the first element of the of the density matrix will be. Ravi frequency rho to one plus Ravi frequency rho one two. So um, where are we going to? I uh, feel that uh, everyone can be tired and exhausted, and there will be three exercises very similar to this one, but. Um, what is the goal and where we are trying to arrive? Uh, before we did have equation of motion in the uh, rotating frame for expansion coefficients for the wave function. On the left side, there were first order time derivative. On the right, there was a linear combination of the uh, expansion coefficients, C1 and C2. 
Right now, we are getting the same type of equation. On the left side, there is a time derivative. On the right side, there is a linear combination. So um, by repeating this exercise for all four elements, we are going to obtain the four equations of motions for all elements of density matrix. Um, it is it hasn't been proved. I just uh, invited you to believe and admit the idea that uh, in the basis of density metrics, one would be able to uh, describe the average power ensemble and uh, interaction with thermal buff in the basis of density metrics. One is able to account for average over ensemble and um, interact with with bus include include bus. So um, I believe if if I start to derive the rest three, uh, we will come to the edge uh, where everyone is get uh, too much uh, exhausted. Uh, let me move towards um, completion. So it, it it will be not very long, and we, we will do it on on coming Thursday, but. Um, uh, let me give a little interpretation of the elements of density matrix. So it is something that I, I believe you can uh, yet digest before the department. So the elements on the diagonal where indices coincide, they are composed of the wave function expansion coefficient with and without conjugation. So in some sense, it is C1 absolute value squared, right? Row to two, it is related to C2 absolute value squared. So uh, let me ask if anyone wants to volunteer and uh, hear an observation. So uh, what is the interpretation of the um, diagonal elements of, of, of density metrics? It's the occupation of those basis states. Yes, exactly. Thank, thank you much, London. And uh, can you uh, can you try and uh, tell what would be the meaning of the <clears throat> of diagonal elements? It's a little more counterintuitive and challenging, but please try. Yeah, that I'm not so sure about because it would wind up being some linear combination of your expansion coefficients. It would so, tell you something about like state mixing or something, or like transitions, maybe? Transitions, transitions. Yeah. Uh, if the system is experiencing the dynamics uh, of transition between ground and excited, then uh, off diagonal elements of density metrics would maximize. If system is purely in ground state or purely in the excited state, then off diagonal elements will be zero. So off diagonal elements uh, uh, are numerical measure of transitions, and also some people call them numerical uh, measure of the uh, phase accumulation uh, between states. Because uh, through, as, as we will see later, uh, when even in absence of interaction, if one uh, takes only unperturbed Hamiltonian and returns back into Schrodinger picture, 
the off-diagonal elements of uh, density metrics will accumulate phase as quick as large the energy difference between ground and excited state. So it is related to transitions and it is related to phase. 